In this question, a scientist has a 0.223 molar sodium hydroxide NOH solution and a phosphoric acid H3PO4 solution of unknown concentration. The scientist uses the sodium hydroxide as the titrant in the burette and 0.0963 litres of the phosphoric acid as the analyte in the conical flask. So we've got 0.0963 litres of H3PO4 in our conical flask and we're adding to that a 0.223 molar NaOH solution. Again, we're going to be using the titration curve to figure out how much sodium hydroxide needed to be added in order to completely react with the H3PO4. Now, H3PO4 is a triprotic acid because it's got three H's on it. And we can see that on our titration curve. We've got one, two, three of those flexions, which show our equivalence points. So those are for the three hydrogen ions being removed from the H3PO4. So when the reaction is complete, you can see in the equation here, H3PO4 has become Na3PO4. So all three H pluses have been removed from the H3PO4. So that's going to be when our reaction is complete. So this is the equivalence point that we need to look at in order to figure out what volume of our titrant was needed to fully react with the H3PO4. So that amount here is 0.09 liters. So that's how much NaOH was added, 0.09 liters. So now we know the volume of NaOH added and we know how many liters we had. So we can use our molarity equation to figure out the number of moles. Here is the solutions page of the reference sheet and here is our molarity equation. Molarity equals the number of moles divided by the volume. So our molarity is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume. We're trying to find the number of moles, so let's multiply by V on both sides. So that cancels out on the right. That leaves us with the number of moles as equal to the volume times the molarity. So we can go ahead and put in our numbers. Our volume we just found was 0 0.09. Our molarity given in the question was 0 0.223. So if we put that into our calculator, we get a number of moles of 0.0201 moles of NaOH added. So let's go ahead and fill that in our answer box over here. Awesome. So now we need to ask how many moles of H3PO4 were present initially. Now the amount of NaOH we added in order to react completely is going to be three times the amount of acid we initially had because in our equation here we have one mole of H3PO4 reacting completely with three moles of NaOH. So we can go ahead and convert our moles of NaOH into moles of H3PO4. We have 0 0.0201 moles of NaOH And we're converting from moles of NaOH on the bottom so that that will cancel out into moles of H3PO4. And we know from our equation that we have one mole of H3PO4 reacting with three moles of NaOH. Now we're going to multiply everything on the top and divide everything on the bottom. The moles of NaOH cancel. We're left with 0 0.0201 times 1 divided by 3 moles of H3PO4. So if we put that into our calculator, we get 0 0.00669 moles of H3PO4. So we can fill that in here, 0 0.00669. Awesome. So we know how many moles of H3PO4 were present initially. We also know the volume because we were given that in the question, so we can use our molarity equation to calculate the initial concentration of the H3PO4 solution. So we're using our molarity equation again. Molarity equals number of moles divided by the volume. We just found the number of moles is 0 0.00669. And our volume given in the question was 0 0.0963 litres. 
So if we put that into our calculator, we get a concentration of 0 0.0695 molar. Awesome. So as you can see, that part worked exactly the same as our previous questions with monoprotic acids and bases. The only difference is that because we had a triprotic acid, we needed to do our conversion between the moles of our base and the moles of our acid using that conversion factor from the question. Next, we're going to be finding the pKa's and Ka's for our acid. Since our acid is a triprotic acid, it has three equivalence points and therefore three half equivalence points and three pKa and three Ka values. Our first Ka value is for when H3PO4 is losing its first proton to form H plus and H2PO4 minus. The second Ka value is for when H2PO4 minus is reacting in water to form H plus and HPO4 2 minus. And then our final Ka value is when HPO4 2 minus is reacting in water to form H plus and PO4 3 minus. Here on the acids and bases page of our reference sheet, we can again see the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. We're looking at the pH one since we're talking about an acid. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. Now remember, at the half equivalence point, the concentration of our acid and conjugate base are equal to each other, meaning our fraction in here is 1 and log of 1 is 0. So this part cancels out and our pKa equals the pH at the half equivalence point. So this is our first equivalence point here. It happens at a volume of 0 0.03. So our half equivalence point is going to be halfway between the beginning and the first equivalence point, which is here. And at that point, our pH is 2. That's our pH at our first equivalence point. And according to our equation down here, pKa is equal to pH at the half equivalence point. So our first pKa is going to be 2. Then for our second pKa, that's going to be between the first and the second equivalence point. So this is our first equivalence point. This here is our second equivalence point. And this here is our third equivalence point. So the half equivalence point for the second pKa is going to be halfway between the first and second equivalence points. So that's going to be here on our graph. And looking across here, our pH is 7 at that half equivalence point. So that means our pKa is going to be equal to the pH according to the henderson hasselbalch equation for our second dissociation. So that means our pKa is going to be 7 for our second pKa. For our third pKa, that's going to be the half equivalence point between the second and the third, which is going to be this point here. And at that point, our pH is 12. So that's going to be our pKa for our third equivalence point. So now we know our pKa's for each of these reactions. Finally, we need to find the Ka value. Now remember, pKa is just P of Ka, and P means negative log. So that's negative log of Ka. 
If we want to find Ka, we're going to have to rearrange this equation to get Ka. So I'm going to start by multiplying by negative 1 on both sides. That gives me negative pKa is equal to log of Ka. Then I'm going to do 10 to the power of because 10 to the power of is the inverse of log. So 10 to the power of negative pKa is equal to 10 to the power of log Ka. But 10 to the power of and log are inverse functions, so those cancel out. We're left with 10 to the power of negative pKa is equal to Ka. So that is our equation we're going to use. Ka is equal to 10 to the power of negative pKa. So for this one here, it's going to be 10 to the power of negative 2. For this one here, it's going to be 10 to the power of negative 7. And for this one here, it's going to be 10 to the power of negative 12. So we can enter those numbers in here. 10 to the power of negative 2 is 0 0.01. 10 to the power of negative 7 is just 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7 in scientific notation. So I'm going to write that as 1 e negative 7. And then finally, for the last one, 10 to the power of negative 12, again, I'm going to write that as 1 times 10 to the power of, or e on this platform, negative 12. So for this skill, again, the first part was identical to previous skills where we're using the last equivalence point on the graph to figure out how much of our base we needed to add to neutralize all of our weak acid. However, we do need to remember that in our chemical equation, we're going to have a different ratio between our acid and our base. So we're going to have to use that to convert between the moles of our base and the moles of our acid. Then we're using our half equivalence points to figure out our pKa values for each of the stages of our acid dissociating according to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Once you find those pKa's by finding the pH at the half equivalence points, all you need to do is plug them into the pKa equation to figure out the Ka.